Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bourbon Quest and the Bourbon Ship. We got uh, my buddy George here with me again tonight. Hello ladies and gentlemen, I want to say uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, I will say that the last one uh, we did, I'd had a couple. I will say that, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, you release that with the express written consent of the NFL football. Yeah, as soon as you walked in my door, there was a release uh, form. Oh, well. It says it right on the door. Uh, you Once you it. walk into the bourbon ship, all consent is released. Just like if you go to Disney World, when you redeem your ticket to go to Disney World, right, right. they have the right to use your likeness. And there's a consent thing on the door. You can, I can't see it. It's in very small print. But when you enter the bourbon ship, you release all consent of your likeness to me. I see. Yeah. Okay. So, anyways, again, welcome to Bourbon Quest. George had an idea today. We're not doing any uh, brand new bottle openings or uh, Infinity Pours or anything like that tonight. We're just going to be drinking some good Tennessee whiskey. That's right, Tennessee whiskey. We'll talk about later if some of it's bourbon or not. I don't want to start that whole debate, but... Um, <laughs> The reason we decided to do Tennessee whiskey tonight was George was doing his uh, week in history, and apparently uh, the 16th marked, I don't know how many years, Jim. No, years. it was actually uh, today, you know, I'm a big history buff to begin with, and today, in this this week in American history, it was actually the, the king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, passed away August 16th, 1977. Here's to the king. Mm, wait a minute. No. I'll, uh, I'll have a little sippy poo to that. Sippy poo? A little sippy poo. And uh, I'm drinking right now uh, Jack Daniels Single Barrel. It's a store pick from Excruges. Uh, George is currently drinking Bell Mead. We have a lineup of uh, all Tennessee whiskeys here. Uh, as I was stating, my, my mother was a huge Elvis fan. Um, you know, obviously, the time era that she was growing up. And I remember the summer between my uh, high school and senior year in high school to freshman year in college my family and I Faye Cooley me and my brother and sister Jeff and Jennifer took a month-long trip around the United States um, which I will admit at the time was the last thing on earth I wanted to do was spend a month with my parents and siblings <laughs> I'd much rather been trying to yeah do find some uh, uh, my dad's uh, whiskey and chasing girls but uh, being but, that it may, but being that as it may, I now look back and that was the greatest experience of my life. And now that both of my parents have passed, I mean, I I cherish that time that we had together because it ended up being the last true, complete family vacation with all five of us, uh, us three kids and my mother and father, uh, Cooley and Faye. And uh, but our first stop on that trip was uh, at Graceland to um, see Elvis's home, or not necessarily home place, but where he made his home in Graceland. Uh, so since uh, he had passed away this week and we wanted to do something, uh, we decided to do some live with Tennessee. So we have a great lineup tonight. Um, we have Bell Mead, uh, which is uh, Greenbrier, uh, Nelson's Greenbrier. This bottle is actually, if you can see here, this is actually signed by Charlie Nelson. Um, oh, I'll, Charlie I'll, Nelson. I'll tell you that story is uh, Charlie, I think his other brother is Andy. They were, um, they were on a trip up to... Uh, Bell Mead, which is just uh, north of Nashville, to pick up some meat from a, a cow they got slaughtered for a family member. And while they were there, they were going over the, um, some historical markers. And there was one relating to Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery, which was started by their great, great, great grandfather, Charles, uh, Charles Nelson. And uh, of course, with Prohibition, it had went under. So literally a hundred years after it went out of business, Charlie and Andy came upon this and decided they were going to restore their family lineage um, and I was actually telling this story one day at Total Wine and uh, to, a, to a person and about that time uh, Charlie walks up and uh, he goes I don't mean to interrupt but uh, I'm one of the brothers that you're talking about I'm like yeah I know who you are Charlie and uh, I'll go ahead and let you finish the story since you probably know it a little better than I do since you were there and part of it but and then that's when he signed the bottle of bell made there for me so um, that's a little history on Nelson's Green Bar and Bell Mead. Why don't you pour this one? This is uh, the original Tennessee whiskey, Nelson's Green Bar. If you need to step away and take that. Yeah, it's uh, actually, uh, we got his car in the shop. Uh, Daniel Warman, great guy. Yeah, go ahead and take that. Um, anyways, uh, probably got that. Back. Yeah, okay, I will. Jesus Christ almighty. But if I wanted to listen to this, I'd just go home. <laughs> I would just, 
go home. Tours. Hello. So this is a Jack Daniels single barrel Hello. Uh, Tennessee whiskey. Hello. I'm a big Jack Daniels fan. This is what I was raised on in my early informative years. Yeah, that's good. And for those of you out there that hate on Jack Daniels, that's fine. Uh, but I think a lot of times a lot of that is based upon old number seven, which is you know eighty proof and meant to be a mixer for those people that are at a restaurant uh, at an Outback wanting a Jack and Coke. But don't base everything upon your college experience with Jack Old Number Seven. Take a venture into some of their other stuff. The the single barrel, my favorite, the barrel, the uh, Georgina single barrel barrel proof. This is amazing stuff right here. Um, and this is nothing like Jack Number Seven. Okay, so. Uh, if you haven't tried any of those, I encourage you to do so. Those are wonderful bottles. Um, and like I said, I'm sipping on this uh, store pick from Excruges here in Knoxville. Um, Jack Daniels. Alright, I'm going to pour this here for you, George. Thank you, buddy. So, um, he needs to disconnect your battery. Is that going to cause a problem? Yeah. It is. I don't know. When we pause this and let's find out real quick because I mean he's got to disconnect it because he's got to do that stuff with the uh, he's got to get underneath. Yeah, he can he can disconnect the battery. He just cannot um, he cannot um, he jump can't the battery off. What do you mean he can't drop the battery off? He can't jump the battery off. He can't oh, jump okay. the vehicle off. But but he but disconnecting the, the negative battery cable yes. will. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right let me go around. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is what we do here, bro. Yeah, you know, sometimes life—it's a, it's a little rough around the edges. We're working on it, though. Yeah. So life interrupts, you know, whiskey too. It, it happens. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. But I'm gonna go ahead and pour this for George when he comes back. Now, what is that you pouring me? Uh, this is the original Nelson's Greenbrier Tennessee handmade sour mash whiskey. This is when I was telling that story about Charlie and Andy Nelson. This is what they started off with. This was their uh, That's the great great batch. grandfather's original batch. So this is the original original recipe. Yes, they recreated the recipe. Absolutely, I'm looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. Don't pour them as deep as this. You know, I'm not. I, you know. I'll be right back. Let me call. All right. While George is doing that, <clears throat> I'd be interested to see what George thinks of that one. And I apologize, Charlie Nelson. I'm not a fan of the uh, Nelson's Green Bar, the original Tennessee whiskey. Yeah, it's just not my not my jam. And I hate to say that because I really uh, love you and and what you've done and your family. And um, I just wish I liked that better. And, but I have to be honest, I don't. I do love the Bell Mead, and this is the Bell Mead Reserve. Um, fantastic. I love the uh, Bell Mead lineup. Um, but I cannot endorse the Nelson screen bar, but that's why we, you know, there's many different options out there for everyone. And I'll, be, I'll just be interested to see what George thinks of it because he's not in uh, hearing distance of me right now. So we'll find out. So, all right, I've been drinking on Jack. I talked about Bell Mead. I started off with a little pour of that earlier. And now I want to talk about it. Chattanooga whiskey. If this is available in your area, I highly recommend it. There's another. This is another great story with Chattanooga whiskey. In I know the stories. I don't know the exact dates. I want to say around the same time. I want to say like 2011, 2010, somewhere around that. When Prohibition happened, it happened in Tennessee, like 1909, prior to the rest of the United States, and. Jack Daniels shut down Chattanooga whiskey, which had been one of the latest, leading whiskey producer producing cities up until Prohibition um, went away. And anyways, when Prohibition ended in 1933, 
Uh, there was like I think five distilleries in Tennessee that um, opened back up. George Dickel, Jack Daniels. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the others, but there were only five places in Chattanooga's not one. And even up until 2010, it was illegal to distill whiskey in Chattanooga. So the people that started this company started a campaign um, with the state legislators to change the laws. And they, I mean, the worst business idea I could think of is they started a business with Chattanooga whiskey like two years prior to it being legal to help change the law. So they started a business that was not legal to do. They weren't producing whiskey, but they were had a campaign to get the laws changed to where they could eventually, hopefully, begin to uh, make Chattanooga whiskey. And luckily, um, that was a success. They were able to get the laws changed and they were able to open the Chattanooga uh, whiskey and distilling company there in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And this is fantastic. Um, if you get a chance to get one of the store picks, I don't have one open right now. We're not opening anything up new. This is just the uh, Chattanooga Whiskey uh, 91 proof. It is a, um, a straight bourbon whiskey. Um, and I think they use a single malt process. Yeah, Tennessee High Malt. High Malt. Uh, Tennessee High Malt is our rich malt forward approach to bourbon made from the finest malted grains. Each step of our process has been crafted to the highest complexity of these ingredients are signature Tennessee high malt recipe known to our distillers as barrel number 91 was selected from the first 100 barrels produced at our experimental distillery. We hope you enjoy it as much as we do. Batch number 20K09R1 and um, well they, they mark them up with part numbers huh? Yeah kind of like that but I'm telling you and, and I mean it, that's such a great story. They started a business that was not able to produce for two years until they got the laws changed, but they did it and they, they're producing great stuff. If you're able to get a store pick of this, uh, I highly recommend it. It's fantastic. fantastic. I'm going to take a little pour of this. Um, George is going to do the uh, Nelson's Green Bar if you want to read a little bit there, George. Well, I mean, it's a pretty interesting story because I actually uh, uh, broke down in Greenbrier, Tennessee, one time in my uh, travels and tribulations through the state, our great state of Tennessee, and uh, I had no idea. So, uh, with, uh, it says, when our great, great, great grandfather, Charles Nelson, introduced the Nelson's Greenbrier Tennessee Whiskey mm -hmm. to the public in 1860, he could never have imagined how popular his creation would become. Or that its process would be set in the standards so for all future tennis we, Tennessee whiskeys were judged. So, uh, anyways, it's, you know, I'm not going to sit here and read anymore. Why don't we just do a tasting here? Yeah, well, I'm Since I'm not a whiskey guy, I mean, this is all new to me. I mean, I'm more of a... Um, scoot just a tad. Can you, can you, you scoot you're in, in, but just scoot a little bit. There you go. That's a little better. There's a lot of me to scoot in. No comment. <laughs> You're a funny man. <laughs> well, I mean, so far it's got a good. Hmm. That's got a good smell to it. It's not bitter. I mean, not like, for example, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, my whiskey experience goes back to drinking Jack Daniels, mm -hmm. uh, Bim Jean, and you know those type of you know wild turkey things along that line. Until you, I learned you became a connoisseur of whiskey if you will right on. you know this is all a little new to me so but george is a fan favorite oh, well, oh he's well. been a fan favorite of mine and mm. evidently from his appearance a couple of nights ago he was a huge fan favorite on bourbon quest so wow i have a feeling that that's gonna you know that's have, that's got kind of, on the show oh, that, 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 that. Are you, are you gonna yeah, let me talk or not? Here, right? just, well, you I wanna hear what's not? Okay, okay, well, I'm on the call here. I wanna hear your. Well, I mean, it's the smell's great of it, but it, I mean, it's got. It's a little bit on the sweet side. I mean, but it's not bitter. I mean, it doesn't have a bite to it like a like a whiskey normally does. You know what I mean? Mm. Would you say it's smooth? I would, yeah. Out of smoothness, I would give this probably. No, I haven't tasted the rest of these. And, you know, this is my first one, so by the next, I don't know, we have 15, 20 bottles here, mm -hmm. we'll see. But, but I'd have to, 
Yeah, I'd have to say that out of the, the so far. Now, what did you give me here on the on the rocks here? Uh, Bell Mead. Um, Elixis. Well, which is the same. Other, yeah, the same company. Now, uh, this the Bell Mead, the first one that I had here, which is on the rocks here. It's actually on a glacier. Yeah, no ice. We, yeah. we didn't want to water it down. I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to educate George. Anyways. Good luck with that. Yeah, there's there's no hope for me. But anyways, uh, yeah, so that is good. But this, the original recipe, I like it. I, I, I like it. I mean, it would be. All right, we, uh, let's do a quick scale on 1 to 10 on George Allen's ranking. Where would it fall on your 1 to 10 scale? I know you don't have a whole lot to compare it to as you are just an infant still on mother's tip as far as it goes to whiskey. <laughs> as long as we're not going to use the Lord's name in vain, we'll be okay. Well, wow, but Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyways, um, inside joke. Um, you know what? You have a pen and paper. I need to write these down because you know, as more of the, you know, as I, I have, you know, this is the best you've got. You don't have a pad without getting up. That that'll do for now. Yeah, this is, but you, just quick right to down. me you know okay so I'll bullshit aside, no, no, no. I'll bullshit aside yeah honestly I would give this on the flavor scale I would give it probably about you know an eight or a nine on the flavor scale on the smell scale I would I would put it right there I mean I I, I just tried the first bell mead chart of this recipe but yeah this I, is the I, bell I, mead reserve I, uh, this is the uh, cast ramp that now, is, uh, mind you, now, now mind you, I'm drinking this straight and that was uh, on whatever well, the hell it's the, you know, still straight it's just chilled well I mean I don't know what that is it it's looks like a prosthetic a, a, nut <laughs> but you know whatever and anyway, glacier rock a glacier you know it looks like something my doctor would use on me like, well anyways um, no I would give this seriously all bullshit aside I would give this an 8 or a 9 on the flavor scale the bitterness is not there. I mean, it's sweet. I, I like it. It's really, really good. So, what your overall ranking? What seven, well, eight, I, nine? Well, I would give I mean, it just off the cuff. Well, I'm gonna go with. A, I'm gonna go conservative here. I'm gonna say like a seven and a half to eight. All right. But again, I've got to try all this. Right. Seven and a half. Let me give us a little sip. Yeah. Well, after me. Yeah. What if I got the the the, the herpes? I mean, the COVID. Yeah, it's too late. Well, you know, the whiskey will kill it. So. so like I, and I'm glad that I'm glad George likes this. I really am, because I may let him take this bottle home with him because I hate it. No, don't. I don't know what and, you uh, ask me to do for it. I mean, so, no, like <laughs> it's so sour, green so, apple. How do you? Get, let me ask you this: How do you get those odors? I mean, I mean, how I mean, do you? A lot of it's experience. So, I, I will, I will give you um, some insight. A lot of it has to do with that I've watched other people and drink along with them for a year and a half now. I mean, when I first started, I didn't really get any of You're like me. I didn't just get any of that stuff either. About it, but. And, I, and I've said before, I don't, I don't believe that I have the greatest nose in the world. I, I AKA know. plug, Nancy the Nose uh, Fraley does have a great nose and a great palate. She, I didn't want to say anything, but I'm going to go ahead and leak it out because Joe's brought it up. I'm working on having her on the show in October. That, that's all I'm gonna say. All right, but there there's kits that you can buy to make like, this to make your own bourbon. Well, no, there's kits that you can buy that like have 30 different um, nose like things. Like you smell whether it be toffee or corn or sour apple, and it helps. So kind of, is that become like the? So let me ask you this question. So does that become like the secret ingredient? I mean, no, the one thing that puts it one bourbon so. over another. I don't think so. I mean, to or, me, or is that an ingredient that every whiskey maker would use, like a caramel or a toffee well, or would it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, your yeah, traditional sure. barbell, you're going to get that vanilla, that caramel, sure, yeah, you know, whatever. But then you have these nuances with sour apple. Right, or we're going to make this blah. bottle number one. So. so the whole thing I think around that is it's it's opening up and, and it's based upon your experiences I mean obviously if something smells like sour apple and when you were a kid you threw up off eating you know six sour apples you know that's probably gonna be a negative thing for you just based upon your you know experience. What my sour apple experience was I mean 
Sour apple chewing tobacco. Ugh. That sounds great. Oh you. my god. That All right. See, Trevor just does this to me. I gotta tell you a tobacco story now. Oh, man. Don't let me forget the first time I threw up on smoke so, tobacco. But I hate this whiskey. The nose is awful. It's sour apple. And I told you this while George was out there because I wanted to get. Is I this wanted, where you put this? I hate this. You don't like that. I don't like the nose. Well, what would great 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 granddad oh, I do? And you got a signed bottle. The flavor yeah, is awful. The, really? I hate it. I, I mean, so, I'm about to rank this like So a, what would you rank this? I I'd gave probably this rank a, it like a two. Oof. So I'm going to give it's this conservative of, seven and a half. And like an I said eight. before, is I, I hate to say that because I love Charlie Nelson. Charlie will cut family. your nuts off. I know, but he's never going to talk to you he again. He might not ever talk to me again or come on the show. You know what? Charlie's going to wait in a parking lot to hit you with a car. But I All love right. Bell Mead. I, I just can't get on board. I, but, I just, but, but like I said before, that's why you make different things. Like no, you like I mean, it, and that's fine. Well, I mean, I get that, I but mean, you know, I just don't. I don't like it. But the question is, how much of a variation off the oh, original? Be, this is this is this is total. This is premium. That's garbage, <sighs> Charlie. I mean, I'm trying. I'm sorry. I, Listen, I hate it. I don't. Want don't it. take anything this idiot says towards your whiskey. Personal. I'm, well, you know, know what? All right. So I'm writing it down. Look, I'm writing it all down. As you know, so I'm going with a seven and a half to an eight. And of course, I'm a whiskey novice. So, well, I am. I'm not going to lie to everybody. I'm just going to be straight up. So, listen, I'm glad you like it, George. Here, I'm going to write pecker nut. Okay. I'm glad you like it. I, and I'm sure other people I would have like it. it. I would actually, I, I would actually, do not. I will tell you this. I would have this in my bar in my office. Well, take this. It home. this really? Yeah. Oh, this is my prize. I don't want it. <laughs> That's right. Steve Walker. Well, I've got a couple more bottles, bottles of it. Come on down. I'll just see if it's a bad bottle at least for me. But George, take that bottle home. All right, Pecker Nut. So, anyways, Pecker Nut rates at a two. Wow. Char I'm sorry, Charlie. Yeah, I am too, Charlie, because I love you, but I just yeah, can't get He's going to hit you. That. Like I said, he's going to hit you with a car yeah. in his parking lot. Sorry. Hey, if you need help, I'll back up over them when you get probably. You do. So the next thing I'm going to taste, George, while I'm kind of on a being a Debbie Downer, yeah, is uh, <laughs> so we're gonna, but I'm going to I'm going to Peyton Manning's whiskey, a Tennessee Volunteer. Okay, well, hold up, just everybody, so you know, I'm going to keep notes on this. So we're going to start here at one, and then we're going to go down the line. So this is bottle number one, because okay. he's got A, B, C, you know. But by the time yeah, we're you know, do and and yeah, you're going to forget the apple, but, but whatever. Enjoying life. So what's what's going to be the next one? Uh, why, don't you, why don't you pour you some Sweetens Cove? That's a $200 oh, bottle of whiskey. God, uh, that's the mechanic again. I, I'll call him back. So, all right. Yeah. yeah well, you know, he knows to disconnect the battery. You know, Danny, love you, bro, but we're moving on. Okay. So we're going to so do bottle number the, three. The, right? what, what George had first, the Nelson Green Bar, I want to say is like $29, $30. And I think that Maybe. I, I think that would be one to have in your this liquor cabinet. This Sweetens Cove that I'm gonna ask George to pour. I've already poured. This is Peyton Manning's $200 George Dickel whiskey. George, which one? Uh, I'm gonna pour this one? Cove. Yeah, it's $200 bottle. All right. So this is Peyton Manning. Yeah. Uh, you love Peyton. I, I mean, hey, congrats, Peyton. Peyton. Here's, here's a Hall of Fame. Here's a shout out to your brother, uh, Hall of Famer. God don't bless. like your whiskey, but we love you. Oh my God! You know what? You're I never gonna get sponsors on this show. Listen, this guy, this. But here's the thing, guy. It's like I did actually a video a few weeks back uh, on this when Peyton went to the Hall of Fame, and you know, I mentioned before I started my bourbon quest like March of um, 2020. This is one of the first, definitely the first expensive bottle I ever bought, and like a month or two in. I was so excited. Peyton Manning had just announced that he was offering this Sweetens Cove. Where is this made at? What's uh, it's, uh, here, it's, it's here. in like Tullahoma or right outside of Tullahoma, Tennessee, which is where Dickel's at. So, right, I, so when I went there, I went to George. So here's the story: is I go to George Dickel, or I go to Jack Daniels, I go to George Dickel, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunt for Sweetens Cove because I'm like two months into my bourbon quest, don't know shit. And I think it's an actual distillery. I, you know, put it in my Google Maps or whatever. I drive up, and the name Sweetens Cove comes from a golf course, a beautiful nine-hole golf course, either in Tullahoma or 
right there outside. And so Peyton and Eli, and, uh, Rod Archie. Roderick, and uh, some other celebrities, Jim Nance and stuff, they, they would play golf there on this nine hole course and, and do shots of you know high value bourbon before their, their holes. And, and so they wanted to create a bourbon, I guess, based upon that same concept. And they came up with Sweden's Cove. Um, oh, I forget the lady's name. They got a master distiller there. Uh, I know she's a, a female, and I apologize. I should know this, and it may come to me in a minute. Yeah, I can taste it. But I think the fact that I don't like it is maybe why I don't remember. But so I'm driving around looking for this thing, GPS it, and I come up across the golf course. Beautiful. If you're ever in Tullahoma and like golf, I, I didn't play there, but based upon the... Uh, visual aesthetics I would recommend it and obviously it's good enough for Peyton and Jim and Eli so there's no distillery there they're sourcing this stuff from George Dick well I drive around like an idiot looking for this place so this is distilled at George Dick well plant? George Dick they source it so they buy whiskey from George Dickel and, and put, put their it name on their label so yes. this is a George Dickel product correct for two hundred dollars yes so it's not a drinking man's whiskey no it's a rich man's whiskey. If you don't like good stuff. Well, I mean. throw your money away, yes. So. The smell, to me, it smells a little bitter. And here's my thing on this, is that it's not bad. It's actually good. It's just that it's not worth $200. And that that's, it has no value. There's no value proposition with this. I mean, it's. It's a no, I agree. It's thirty I, I, or forty dollars. It's not now. It's thirteen years old. It's like a hundred, hundred and one point four proof. Now here's my point, and I think I actually did this on the last video. Or not we're, we weren't trying to repeat stuff, but we were just doing a Tennessee thing. You can go George Dickel, fall two thousand five. This is. Um, 13 year old whiskey. This was the number one, uh, I think for 2019, this was Whiskey Advocate's number one whiskey for uh, for Whiskey Advocate in 2019, I believe. George Dickel, 13 years old, $35. Can I, can I just give This is George Dickel, 13 years old, 101 proof, 100 proof, 101, 13 years, 13 years, 200. $35. Tastes like crap. <clears throat> this was Whiskey Advocate's number one bottle. What the what the heck, Peyton? <laughs> it doesn't matter. Peyton's name on it, so you know what? I, I get it. And but it's probably the with celebrity whiskey. You know what? And it's it, And I love Peyton. I, 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 well, I mean, I mean yeah, I yeah, honestly, honestly, I don't love me right now, but can I, well you want to hear my review yeah, on it? I want to I want to compare it to well, well, I mean, you thing. know, you're just yakka yakka yakka. I know, yakka. that's what I do. You're like you know, a 16-year-old girl on a first date. Will you shut the know. hell up and let me... Just... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Let's move on. All right, no, I well, your thoughts. Well, I mean, I honestly... I get on rants. Yeah, you do. I mean, so honestly, the smell's not that great. I mean, it's 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 just... it's There's something in it. It's There's a tinge in it. It's it's not as good as the first bottle here it, it, uh, you I'd know it the, sweet, the first bottle even if i gotta pay that oh whatever i mean you know but but you know this right here for 200 dollars was your price point on 200 dollars 200 dollars a bottle i really don't care it's got it, i can't identify what it is but it's got a tinge well, here or something well, what's uh, that tinge here take a take a whip you know what it is yes what is it here's I'm going to tell you this because, you, well, okay. actually, before I tell you that, but the flavor is before, just, before I tell you that, I want you to taste that sweet and scary to this George Dickel bottle. Right, yeah, let's do that. Number because. one whiskey for 2019 and tell me what you think. So the price point, Peyton, brother, I'm sorry, $200. man. You know what, Peyton, brother, you need to go find you one of these little towns and try, you know, try that and get away from George Dickel. This recipe, I would not recommend this. It's not, the price point. Not on the price. I, if it was $30? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, unless Peyton's gonna come over and drink it with you. Oh, I'd pay 200 Yeah, well, of drink course. It with me. But, I mean, I don't like the smell of it. The, no. the, it's got a bitterness to it. It's just, you know, yeah, it just, for me, you know, I, I would still, I would rank this maybe 
And again, I, I may come back and adjust these numbers, folks. I don't know. But to me, out of, this, out of my second tasting tonight... Well, I don't know. We'll have to adjust that later. We'll just keep going. It's it still in the It is now. We're recording again. It cut off because it said maximum time reached. I don't know. What okay. That was. Anyways, I, I don't we know. We don't know the tech. But anyway, kind of, anyways, that, the point. Remember. The point is okay. Going back and recapping. I don't know where we lost us in the uh, yeah, video nice. or not. But anyways, right here on this price point, twenty nine dollars. Flavor's good. Exceptional flavors. Smell tremendous. Then we moved to Peyton Manning's brand, and Peyton, we love you in Tennessee, brother, but you know what? I, I, I just can't. For $200 a bottle, I could not see a bottle of this sitting in my bar. Not not, not at the price point. No. That'll be the first and only bottle I'll ever buy of Sweet and Skull. And uh, like I said, in that story, if, it, if we got cut off for a little bit, I bought that two months into my bourbon quest right. because it was Peyton Manning. I had to have it. So where would you rate that? What it was. So where would you put that? I'm putting this at a two. This right here, I'm, I'm putting it at a flat two as well. Like, All right. It's, so if uh, and, and some of that's bait, there's no value proposition. It's not. No, no, no. I, I totally, can give you totally. ten bottles right off the top of my head for two hundred dollars. No, I don't buy, know what those ten bottles are. Go buy I'm, Old Car. Go buy Bargetown uh, for two hundred dollars or less. Bargetown uh, uh, Discovery Batch, Old Carter. If you can find it, any of their bottles. Okay, so let's move on. What have you given me here? So this is George. This is the same thing. George Dickel, 13 years old, bottled and bond, 100 proof. The, the aesthetics as far as, all right, this is a blue-haired blonde girl with big tits. This is a blue-haired blonde girl with big tits. They, they're the same thing. One's, one's a $200 price level to take her out. One's a $35 price level to take her out. Get very similar in smell. Very, very similar. This one's got a little bit more of a tinge to it. Let's see here. I mean, and it's 13 year old, yep. right? 13 year old whiskey, not 13 year old girl. That's not Jesus cool. Christ. That's not cool. I'm I didn't kidding. say that. You gotta get But I get that. this woman analogy, I didn't want them to. Alright, alright. Moving on, folks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, honestly, what's the price point on, on Dipper? $35. To be honest with you, I, other than this being a little bit more bitter and having a little bit more of a hit at the end, these, to me, are, very similar. are almost the same. Not surprising. Almost the same. I think this is better. And part of that might just be because I know what they you're cost. You're prejudiced. Yeah, I think you're, you're being Obviously, a little prejudiced. Obviously, based upon I mean, cost, you're going with this all day, every day. Yeah, if I, in other words, I mean, what, I, what I'm telling you is this. Unless Peyton's drinking this with you, then I'll take it. Well, you know, he'll look at this and he'll probably use, since we're using his name. Yeah, uh, he'll probably or whatever, or enter me in a lawsuit. Yeah, anyways, but. Get me banned from my season tickets at the University of Tennessee. I don't know. Anyways, the point is, is that to, if I'm at, to, at your price points. Yeah. Um, this. So you. I think this, the, the smell is similar. The hit is a little harder on the flavor. But as as far as if I'm going to have something in, again in my bar, I would definitely have a dickel there before I would pick papers. Yeah, no doubt. I agree. So I, I would put this I, right now my rankings. Hang on, just one more, one more sippy poop. I would put this at about a four, four and a half. I, so, I mean, it's not. I think the flavor is a little. Which one? Uh, this one right here. This. Okay. Is, I'd put it at a four and a half. And again, these numbers may change. The drunker I get, the more I drink. But, you know, I'm coming out of the gate. But I, I'd put the, the dickel at a four and a half. So, okay. um, what, what would you put that at? So, you asked me a question earlier. And I, sure. didn't, I didn't want to answer it until you tried the bottle of the bond. Sure, sure. Which, where would you put that bottle? So, you asked me, what's that flavor? And I didn't want to influence Sure, people. sure. No, but what is it? Well, this is what people in the whiskey community say. And a lot reason why a lot of people don't like George Dickel is that they they say that George Dickel ha tends to have a Flintstone vitamin note. 
Okay, explain, Lucy. Have you ever had Flintstone vitamins? I mean, you're from Costa Rica. You don't probably don't even know what Flintstone vitamins no, are. No, we don't have Flintstones. Nothing. We actually have the cards there, but <laughs> yeah, no Bam Bam, uh, no Pebble. Get to your point. What's your point? Move on. What's your point? It's really hard to explain unless you've ever tasted it. Like as a kid, my mother gave me Flintstone vitamins. It has this. And you see, look what happened. It, yeah. Good well, point. I mean, Lord have mercy. I mean, you Thanks, know what? I, I would no, actually say it's like it's like, I don't I, I really can't hardly explain it other than saying Flintstone vitamin because they would come in orange, purple, well, you know, yeah, cherry, no lawsuit, Peyton and Flintstones now. I don't think Flintstones are in business anymore. But <laughs> I, I, it's just like this candy vitamin flavor. I don't know. How you to know, and that's it. the thing. It's the tinge. It's just the yeah. hit, the hit. It's like you know. It's like what the fuck is that? Hey, bourbon questers out there, I send mean, me an email to bourbonquest33 dot, or at, no, I'm sorry, bourbonquest33 at gmail dot com if, I don't even know if you can buy Flintstone vitamins anymore. Oh my God, we're but doing a bourbon tour, you're talking about Flintstones, let's move on. That's what people say that George Diggle has, it has a Flintstone vitamin note to it. Really? That's what, that's why people don't like it. It's Well, maybe they should try their gummies, I, I don't know. But this and this, I mean, you're talking a hundred and seventy dollar difference in price. Oh yeah, no brainer. And you know what? This one's just a, whatever the well. This one has Peyton. What, and you know, whatever the Flintstone it, Listen, it, listen maybe they don't put as many vitamins. Vit, you know, the Vitamin you know, Vitamin they Company. Could, maybe they don't. You know, like in Lucy, remember the yeah, Vitamin. Uh, anyways, but for a hundred so put more Hall's cough drops and stuff. Uh, oh my god, you know, you're just oh we're, we're throwing out you know I know Hall's it's... cough drops. If you'd like to sponsor our channel, let us know. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not a, you know, I just came to drop him off. I've I've only been here <laughs> twice true. and now he's if you if, you know I, I have you know George once you. you're not on here every week People are not going to want to tune in. They'll be like, where's George? You're, you're there taking over is, my show. Yeah, I already know. Thank you, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Taking over my, uh, show. my, my, my the, To the fans that have watched this so far, I've received a lot of phone calls. I'll just, let me back up and say this. In my little drunken stupor the other night, and again, I, I asked for that stuff not to be released. That, but you walked to the door and there was consent given. Just like at Walt Disney. That's what he tells the girls. I'm just saying. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but going back to the whiskey, let's let's stay on point here before I don't want to get too messed up here. You know, let's I'm trying to do you I know an honest I, review I want, here. I love it. Like, but but you like that? I hate I it. And, love, I, and this, I'm glad you like it. Girl, this right now, this home. right now, I mean, this is Kyle Larson right now, just whipping so, everybody's ass right now. As far as I'm concerned, big NASCAR right, guy. Let's, but let's it, move on. But yeah, this the tinge hits a little harder. Price point. I would buy this shit before I. No, I'm sorry. Well, you can buy three of these before you buy them. Well, my point is that I, I just, you or know, unless you Peyton, you know, something. unless Peyton comes out from behind the bar and says, "Hey, yeah, let's crack a bottle of my whiskey," then I would. It would and be only, the best shit and, in the world. And even then, only if he says Omaha, Omaha. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. So, what, where would you? Let's want to move on. What, where would you put? I, I put that at four now. Well, where would you put that? I've never been a real Dickel fan. But, yeah, me either. But like, where would you put that number wise in your ranking? We're doing that's ranking. A good question. Let me taste it again. Mm, a little sippy poo for you. A little sippy poo for me. I'd put it like at a six or seven. All right. So, like, I, so, I, so, the fact that is I it, would, I would disagree. With so, it six, being, six and it's a half. It's my whiskey of the year. As was no, Anderson. not at all. No, I mean it's not like granted. Not I, was, I had not, no. I had not started my bourbon quest in 2019 when it won whiskey of the year, but I think at least I've had three better than it that were from 2019. Now, I will say this release: when I started my journey in 2020, my number one bottle. I can't say I, I'm not going to go back to 2019 because I had not started it yet. But for 2020, my number one bottle of 2020, since I wasn't doing videos then, and if you can, if that bottle still exists, which it does, probably not for long. But I saw it on a shelf 
about four weeks ago and I kicked myself in the ass for not picking up another bottle because I was waiting on four batch four and batch, batch five and I should have picked up another batch three and I didn't. I will not make that mistake again if I have that opportunity. I still have a bottle of batch three left, but Barstown Discovery Batch 3 2020 Whiskey of the Year says Bourbon Quest. Alright, so anyway, so uh, hey guys, listen. <laughs> you guys, I've just gotten some text messages from my buddies, and it's like, uh, you know, hey, thanks for the kind words. Um, Thanks for the shout out, everyone. Um, so, moving on. Hmm. I'm ready to move on to another bottle. All right, well, hold on, hold on. Let's stop, 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 stop. Since we're on the Dickel, we're going up the Dickel Road. No. You have this. Is this the same shit? No, it's a different, it's a different. Well, match. hold on. Well, okay. Let You know what? Again, no, I want Steve, to Steve, Steve stop, stop. As a novice, you yes. brought me in here to collaborate, right? Right. And ladies and gentlemen, see if you agree with this or not. But, you know, since we're on the George Dickel kick here, you know, and I'm sure that's probably going to taste similar to these two. Let me go ahead and do a tasting on it. And no. Listen. I want to take you in a different and then, then let you Well, back. you know what? I, I, I know. I, I think it's better. I want you to, I want you to go down a different avenue, and then I'll bring you around the circle and back into the so square. So you're ranking this six and a half to seven? No. What was uh, Yeah, yeah, that's right. Six right. and a half? Uh, seven to eight. Really? No, I'm talking about the dickel. All right, six to seven. I, it's, it's, I mean, that's... Really? Yeah. I'm putting this on a, on a seven and a half to eight, and you're putting that right there with it? Yeah. Wow. I hate that shit. I rent it as a two. Charlie. I'm just saying. But we can get your brother and get one wheel each of them if we run, run them over. But So, uh, what I want to take you so down... So, we're going to do six and a half? That's fine. Was that a fair number? Yeah. So, I want to take you down a different road. And I've talked about this before. Chattanooga Whiskey, they started a business before it was legal to get the laws changed so they could produce Tennessee whiskey and they're making awesome stuff. Here's a glass. You're gonna taste ten Chattanooga whiskey. You ready? Sure. I'll pour it. Love Chattanooga. Great city. It is a good city. It used to be a lot better than Knoxville as far as their downtown, but Knoxville's come a long way, but 20 years ago when I was working in both Knoxville and Chattanooga, Knoxville was not good. And Chattanooga's got a lot of stuff going on. If you've not been to Chattanooga, I recommend it. Um, Great city. Go go do Rock City. Um, go do the Chattanooga Choo Choo. Uh, so, okay, so we're moving on. What yeah. are we doing now? Chattanooga Whiskey. And which is, let's see here, let's see the bottle. Oh, Chattanooga Whiskey. It's Straight a high malt. bourbon whiskey. It's a high malt. So, let's see here. Tennessee high malt is our rich malt forward approach to bourbon made with the finest malts grains each step of our process has been crafted to highlight the complexity of these ingredients so let's taste these yeah, complexity I want to, of these I want to hear your thoughts on this all right I don't is that, is I'm, that not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything keep about that in line because I've got them numbered all right I'm not so. gonna say anything about it because I don't want to influence all right your thoughts but I, I mean, I mean, just like the mm. Tennessee uh, now for Nelson's all Green Bar, I didn't want to influence you because mm. I hated it. You loved it, or at least liked it. Maybe loved it. And I'm, I'm happy to you that's because just got a nice. Because rich, your, your, your well, takeaway well. prize tonight is a bottle of Nelson's Green Bar whiskey. Because well, I'm I don't a full bottle. I'm drinking. They're gonna have that bottle. I'll give you a full bottle. <laughs> no, no, you're taking that one. No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, I'm not. Yeah, you no, are. Not. You'll take it and you'll like it. Just that's what I told her. <laughs> Anyways, man, this is. I like the smell. Oh, the smell is excellent. Man, it's just you can you can smell the smoothness in it. I mean, compared I compared to these, I mean, I would, you know, chocolate, cherry, caramel. Mm, yeah, it's you can tell those combinations. Spice, I, I mean, black it's, pepper. I mean, I mean, I can tell. It's delicious smelling. It really is. I mean, you know, and, and, and you get a little ethanol. No, not, not, no, 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 no. Hold on a second. You got to compare these. 
Now, you you get one of these bad boys as a store pick, like at a anywhere from 110 to 115 proof. Thumbs up, baby. Dude, so what's your price point on that bottle? Um, I want to say like, I mean, I can go look it up, but mm. it, I, I mean, that's in that, the ballpark. It's thirty-five dollars. Oh, still, I mean, it's an affordable whiskey. I mean, it's got a great flavor. It's got a great smell to it, and great story, great smell. I mean, it, but you could you could just tell very unique. It's a unique concept. Like Chattanooga whiskey is putting out amazing stuff, in my opinion. I have high prices for Chattanooga Whiskey and my those guys. Um, wow. I'm, I'm going to try and reach out to them and, Man, I'm gonna and tell you shoot at their distillery. All right, well, you know, because yeah. yeah. okay. they're great. And I've okay. got well, Chatty Kathy in Chattanooga. And you know I am. I, I I'm slithering, slithering tongue, Steve. As I'm not slithering. <laughs> if you drink a little or you drink a lot, every liquor has a story. Yes, they do. And I'm going to tell you now this, man, just the bounty of it, the smell of it, I mean, it just, it, it's, it's good. It, I mean, I really like it. And the flavor, I'm going to tell you something. I mean, this is good for a malt whiskey. Oh, that's, it's so good, man. Mm -hmm. It's so good. Little tinge at the end, but it's not bad. It's just nice and sweet. You know, this is a, this, this would be my comfort whiskey. Oh, Every, I, I, I your daily Adam, sipper, have this on your bar. And yeah, the I would friends. definitely. I mean, it's not available everywhere, but the availability is becoming greater and greater. So, if you see this, buy this. You know what? I, I would. Uh, I, well, hold I on will second. say that when I did a tasting of uh, the Chattanooga lineup before, uh, I liked the '91 uh, and loved the like 115 store pick that I had from Total Wine. Um, they also made a 111 calf strength. It was probably my least favorite to be honest, uh, but they were all good. But this, the, the 91's wow. a hitter. Here, here's it's some hitter. It's an easy here's, you see now, easy sipper. I mean, it, when you say it's an easy sipper, well, it doesn't uh, burn, it's smooth, it's here, great taste, here, great flavor. Go ahead. Here's something that's interesting. Yeah, uh, as I said earlier, it says each step in the process has been crafted to highlight the complexity of these ingredients. Our signature Tennessee high malt recipe, known to other distillers as Barrel 91, yeah. was selected from the first hundred barrels produced at our experimental distillery. We hope you enjoy this. And guys, I gotta tell you what, you guys rocked it. Out of a hundred barrels, I mean, you know, that's kind of like in the lab, just being the mad scientist. Mm -hmm. I, I've got to say that, uh, and here we go. The mash, there's a mash bill on it. Yeah, seven days for right? me. You know, I, I've got to say that uh, I really, really enjoy this. This is this so far, guys. I'm it's gonna. Awesome. I, I mean, yeah, for for your price point. Yeah, and like you said, five bucks. And if you're a Tennessee guy like we are, and you want to have the Tennessee on hand, this would be perfect to give as a gift to someone. I mean, absolutely, the flavors there. The I mean, it, it's it's got all the stuff you need. I mean, it, it's totally it's on point. I mean, I would I would definitely. So this is my my you know I'm gonna rank this. I'm gonna put that about a nine. So here's the thing. So I'm gonna put that about a nine, folks. Really? Where, are you, I, where are you gonna put that at? Where's your ranking on it? I'd be, I'd put it at an eight. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's like, I, I mean, it's just the flavors there. Just because I've had better stuff, but at thirty, I've not had anything better at thirty-five dollars. I've had things better that are. Man, I just, I, I'm, I'm gonna but, tell you, it's just the, right on point. I mean, it really is. Listen, now I'm excited to taste the rest of these. But I'm going to tell you, like I said, right now, Chattanooga. Yeah, Chattanooga is awesome. Home of Volkswagen, by the way. Yeah. Um, you guys are taking it, and I got to say that old Charlie and his boys, uh, Greenbrier, they're they're running a close second now. We got now keep in mind, folks, we've got old 
No, that's old number seven. No, we got old number seven. Now, let me tell you something now. And, and that's and, a legacy bottle, but it's still the same. Still. And, and me and my old friends, we know we've had many, many a night with old brother Jack here. Yeah. And you know what? We've also had many a nights when you say, hey, watch, watch this. Jack Daniels kicked my ass again last night. No, I wouldn't go that far. I've never, yeah. yeah. By the way. But anyways, that's coming up. But I, I got to say. That, that is going to be next. Thank but I, I, I got to say that, uh, you know, Chattanooga, hey guys, excellent job, great excellent. flavor, great smell. I mean, they like are I said, doing everything right. Price points on it. I yes. mean, I, I would buy a case of this at Christmas. Yes. And I would give this to my friends, my clients. Yes. This, you know, especially your folks that live out of town that, you know, you know how like some folks of my family, they want the authentic Tennessee stuff. Yeah. You know, you can, you can buy this stuff that, anywhere. But this... I get that all the time. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't disclose too much, but yeah, sometimes I would, on guys, where I job. work, at times we get people from out of state that want to come in and, and buy do the authentic purchase and get buy and buy gifts for family members. Sure, else that cannot buy Tennessee whiskey or it's not available in their state, whatever. So they're from Connecticut or you know Kansas City or. Michigan doesn't matter, but they they come in. They want to buy genuine Tennessee whiskeys that they can be proud of to give as a gift and maybe have a story. I will tell you this: my two go-to's when I have that situation arise, yeah, is it's not Jack Daniels because anybody you in can buy Jack 172 countries, country, nothing against Jack Daniels. Oh, 172 countries can get Jack Daniels. I mean, I love Jack Daniels. It's, it's I mean, everywhere. And, and like I said before, people that don't like Jack Daniels usually base that on old number seven and they never give the single barrel projects a, a chance, especially the, I'm telling you, Jack Daniels, single barrel, barrel proof, top five whiskeys of all time at, that you can readily find. That I will leave it at that. But... But my go-to story when people want to come into a store I work at and they want to buy something Tennessee that what do you put them on that their friends may not know of or cannot get or whatever I tell them two things number one is Chattanooga <coughs> get out of my get it's, the hell out of my neighborhood before dark it's awesome <laughs> no, Chattanooga whiskey if you're if you're coming from <coughs> Michigan to buy this and it's not available there in it may or may not be. We'll get you when you're sure you're drunk. So Chattanooga whiskey and Bell B, or you know, because those are delicious Tennessee whiskeys that are not available everywhere. Yeah, so, I'm gonna go. The guy, you know, I'm off on a tangent. So that's that's basically old number seven. It's just in a legacy bottle, which is a throwback to a bottle from like 1920 or something. Nothing necessarily special about it, other than the label. Well, I'm going to say, but the Chattanooga, man, no. Chattanooga is just, you know, to me, it's not, you know, I'd have to say that one knocks the sock off. That's good. This one has got the sock almost off. But what would you rank that? Eight, nine? Where would you put that one? I, I'm between seven and eight. Dude, you got to quit coming up with these conservative numbers. Well, that's because I've had a lot better stuff. I'm I not have. gonna rank this as a ten because well, you it's go not. With me, I thought we were working together. No, we are. But, oh you're, you're, but you know what? We're we're this at, gonna be my first and no, last we're, show. No, I mean, I'm just. Oh, it's your second show. It could be your last. Hopefully not. But no, it's just based upon. I get it where you're coming from. I just have had well, again, other I, experiences. I, but, but, but you see here that the, the thing this is, is, dude. But here's the thing: it's price point. I, I, this I is am a freaking hitter. You know what? I it's am a hitter. Hey, quit. The point is that. That I am That's a novice. Awesome. I am a. I know. You know, other than going and ordering, like you know, when I go to the bar, I you know, want a Jack and Coke, yeah, or a Jack and Seven, do. or a Seven and Seven, or yeah, you is. know, those typical drinks when you go to a bar. Right. But I'm going to tell you that from from the perspective of. But do you see the difference between? But I'm a novice. Drink. Eat and smelling it. Yeah. Like, no. 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 I, I, I totally it, not just like right, throwing right. it back and getting drunk. Well, that's what we're doing, right? But eventually we're gonna get there right but that's not that's not why we're doing it like we're experiencing it and yes it ends up leading to that but 
Yeah, you talk. You know much. the best thing about yeah, you talk too much. The best thing about bourbon is is sharing it with friends like George. Yeah, because and I'm a lucky, novice. I mean, I and I'm am. lucky to have a friend like George that I can share this experience with. And he asked me for a ride at eight thirty in the morning. Like that's gonna happen. It's not ah. gonna happen. But he Uber sold, baby. But he still has probably saved me like four grand. Nah, well, this that's week. another story. That's another story no, for another time. But I'm just saying, he's a good friend. And I'm happy to share my oh whiskey and bourbon yeah, more than. Okay, so let's move on. Let's let's go to O number seven. All right, so you're gonna hit that at you're hitting Chattanooga. Chattanooga is love. But what you hit? What's your number on that one? Seven and a half. <sighs> seven and a half. And, and you know I have to respect out of these. I have to respect my out of the line. Well, well out, out of the lineup, lineup finish out of the lineup. I. If we're ranking them one through ten, this I, is probably my number one bottle out of. These. Well, I, I'm because you know again I'm a novice. Based here. on value, well, I'm a novice. Based. Okay, well, quit but listen. Blah, 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 blah. You know, zip yeah. it sometimes and listen. I can't listen. You can't. We can't zip it. No. You. Uh, you know what? Lo use your listening ears. All right. It's your show for a minute. I gotta go find something. What are you gonna go? Anyways, um, so. No, well, anyways, going back to this, um, yeah, I would definitely, and again, I'm a novice drinker. Uh, well, not a drinker, I'm a novice drinker, but a novice drinker of whiskeys. And this is all new to me, and as you saw my from my appearance the other night, um, you know, I, uh, I was just kind of kidding around, and then all of a sudden, everybody and their brothers hit me up and, uh, you know, think we should move on with this, and, and I'm kind of having fun. Yeah, so it's it, it's it's good, you know. I, I'm enjoying the expansion of this my. This is the great thing. Is of it, my booze knowledge? It's about having fun, hanging out with friends, sharing, and sharing with you our Bourbon Quest community. I know we're not even a month into this, but it's exciting. We're having fun. I hope that you're having fun. We're gonna have fun regardless. If it ever becomes anything like Bourbon Junkies, that'd be great. I'm not expecting that. They gave me a shout out on their channel the other night. Um, I have no expectations whatsoever. I'm doing this out of love, passion, one to share, one to... I mean, to be honest with you, in the last couple of years, George, we've been in person with each other four times and two of those have been this week. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. It brings you together with, and I love this guy. We've known each other for over ten years, and we probably <laughs> saw each other four <laughs> times in the last year, and two of those have been this week. So, because I started this channel, and he's agreed to come on a couple of times. Well, the first time people you know, love him. The first time you didn't have my permission, but you supposed to. No, I did. It's posted on the door. Oh my God! <laughs> Here's the thing: is that. I've loved George for a decade. And yeah, because we had the 10 years, remember, remember the last show? We, that's what we talked 10 about. 10 years but of the, the thing, appendix, right. But the thing is, is that... You and your appendix, <laughs> me and your appendix have a special no, relationship. No, well, it... Your I appendix had was an appendix for you at the years. moment, but then it wasn't, so then I've kind of decided to move on from the appendix and just hang out with you. That's so you should thing. you should feel good about I it. I do feel good I, about I feel that. good about that. So. But, but... Whiskey has brought us back together. Yeah. <laughs> and there's nothing greater. I mean, that's what it's about. Well, let's move on with the review. Yeah. So, okay. So we're going to move on to the, we're going to, uh, you know what, guys, I have to say. <sighs> I almost died from this a couple of times. <clears throat> well, I wouldn't say as far as dying, but guys. I almost did a couple of times. A lot of my military buddies. That have served. You were in the military. No, my son oh, was. Yeah, but your son is. a lot of my 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 buddies that were ex-military. I mean, I'm gonna tell you, this is this is like this is like Paula Deen's comfort food. Oh yeah. In the whiskey world, I, I to me it is. I agree. This is the tried and true. This is you know. It's it it doesn't matter where you go in the world. 172 countries, I believe. When you see this, year. and it doesn't matter where you're traveling among the world, when you see this, um, 
it's just like you know I just want a little taste of home yeah and and this is what it is for a lot of folks it really tr truly truly yeah. is and we're very fortunate we live like two and a half to three hours, three away hours yeah from yeah. Lynchburg um, I am a Tennessee Squire and so I feel obliged to tell that story this time. You're a squatter? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it out. It's not the No, squatter. I don't want to. No, we're back on. So, you're probably feeling, is that thing dumping into the hard drive? No, the I'll download it later. So here's the deal. All right, we're so going back. Number seven. Your military buddies, whatever. You can no, 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 whatever. Okay, let's, no, 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 let's back up. No, I'm sorry. I, we, let's agree to disagree. Not whatever. No, there, there's been. Look, we when I you. moved back in the United States from being abroad, Can you I know. Pour? Well, here I poured us one together. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Because you're getting a little confusing with all your damn glasses and yeah, everything. We got, you got know, a lot going on. On. <laughs> We got a lot. Going on. <laughs> but anyways, when I moved when I moved back to the United States from being abroad. This right here. What broad was you? <laughs> you know what? Uh, comedy's not your 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 forte. Yeah, you're probably right. But anyways, this you know was it? You know when I By was way, a very very young man. You know you're this, still a young man. Well, no, I'm not. I'm older. Well, I'm no, you're pretty not. darn you're old. But anyways, this right here. It is the number one, like you said, 172 countries in the world, made here in Tennessee. Go to the distillery, you yes. get a sampling, but you can't buy the shit there. I mean, I don't know what the dry you county. You can at the distillery. Can yeah. you? It used yeah. to be a dry county. Anyway, it still is a dry county. You can only buy like um, gift bottles <sighs> at the gift shop, the White Rabbit gift shop. But what I, what I want to say about this is. Mm -hmm. This is like, oh, I think I showed you out in the, well, I it's already like finished off Legacy there. Edition number two. This is Legacy Edition number one. It's, it's the same shit. It's Jack Daniels old number seven. It's just in their 1910 bottle with this green level. Guys, this is, this, right, can, oh, I, can I see this? Yeah. This is like a comfortable pair of shoes oh, for a lot of folks. For a lot of folks, folks around the country. When I mean, you're when you're sitting at home on a really? Saturday morning, yeah. cooking bacon and eggs, and well, I don't drink Saturday your pajamas, and well, I don't want to put on a comfortable pair of shoes. This is this it, right? Is there, yeah, right? no, honestly, I mean, this in the drinking oh, world. Well, I, I told you. Oh, we're sharing. Yeah, we're sharing because, yeah, I still have things to do and people to see and places to go. But, but anyways. It just for me, this is my comfortable pair of shoes right here. These are my Crocs. You know, I, I've drink, I've um, in. I will have it at my bar every day you come. Yeah, and absolutely. And how many folk when you when people come in, how many people look for this or order this from you? Not so much because I have so much other great shit that they would rather have. They can get that anywhere. But I have a lot of stuff salute. they can't get hey, anywhere. Here's to here's to Jack Daniels. Uh here's to the folks in Tennessee. And, uh, and you know, hey, and the people that amazing job, amazing bird. You know what, guys? You Shout care. out to you Goose know and Randy. Goose and Randy. You know Goose what? Goose and Randy. You know what, you guys, this old, old me and Jack have gotten through a lot of things together, and I'm sure we'll go through a lot more together, but God bless. You know, I, I really you don't. You know what killed Jack? Yeah, he was a terrible story. Let's not get into the negativity. No, but. Look I, it up. Google, yeah, it's story. worth a good. Well, what are you going to tell the negative story about? Do you know how Jack died? Yes. He wound up getting like MRSA in his foot and it, or what? He had a, 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 a an infection or some shit. No. Do you know how it happened? Trying to get in the safe. Yes. Yeah. Jack, like, like he doesn't think I know that story. No, I didn't know. He yeah, didn't know. I'm not that big of an idiot like you think I am. So Jack Daniels, uh, he had turned over the accounting to his, I think, brother-in-law Les Marlowe, and he was trying to get in the safe and. I had not been in the safe in like 10 years because last and he wound up it was a graduate from Vanderbilt and it uh, wasn't it wasn't it he, he wound up cutting his foot or his so, hand or something when he goes in and he's trying to open the safe it the yeah he story wanted, goes yeah. is normally Jack does not get to the distillery before noon mm -hmm. and this particular day he gets there early I don't know eight nine o'clock in the morning <sighs> And Les is not there. He goes to try and get in the safe, and 
He's fiddling with the combination. He can't open it. He thinks Les has changed the combination. Gets pissed off. Kicks the fucking safe. And breaks his big toe. And, you know, that's like a lot of us yeah. being men, we like ignore yeah. the pain, try to walk it off. Prior to, yeah, and right, so he does prior that. to the tennis shot. Yeah. He could have, uh, I mean, he was rich, at, obviously, at this time. Could have afforded to have gotten good care, but didn't want to be a Wanna pussy. Wanted to an infection as late. And got an infection, got gangrene, and died a year later. That's, yeah. So the murder weapon is the safe, and it's still at the Jack Daniels. If you go take the tour, they'll tell you the story. But here's what I'll say about Jack Daniels. I never took a tour to know that oh, story. Well, I'll take you. We'll go to the Spar House and everything. Because here's the story. Well, I'll tell two stories. Oh, the first story is that when I was a uh, Sigma Nu at ETSU, our uh, Christmas tradition it was to buy our big and little brother their favorite bottle of whiskey. My big brother was uh, George Gwynn, and I would always buy him a bottle. I think it was... Well, I, was it Jim? It was either Jim Beam or Wild Turkey. I want to say it was Jim Beam. Mine was Jack Daniels. He'd buy me a bottle of Jack Daniels. So, Christmas comes. I get my bottle of Jack Daniels. I drink the whole fifth in probably less than two hours. Pass out. Quit breathing for like 45 seconds. You did? Seconds. Yeah. George, or not, um, Coffee. Was, there. was it James, James Coffee? I believe that's right. Uh, Gave me like mouth to mouth to like bring bring me back to life. That was his boyfriend. Don't you let him lie to you for one damn <laughs> Love minute. You. Love you, coffee. But here's the deal. And the, I mean, I quit breathing for like 45 seconds after drinking a fifth of. Them. So are we gonna have to have a seven. paramedic team standing no, by for this? We're not. We're not. We're not really. Are you days. sure? We're not doing that. Uh, I mean, I'm just but, wondering. So that happens. That was on a Saturday night. I wake up. Well, I don't wake up. But um, there's a knock at our door. Me and my roommate, Sean Owsley, Railroad. And uh, there's a knock on our door. That, like, hey, it's time to go play fuck em up football. Which is football with no pads. And I wake up and I'm like, let's do it, motherfuckers. And I go play it. This yeah. is a family show. No, it's not. This is definitely not a family show. But try to make a PG third that, and that's why we can't have nice things. Well, maybe. But that's the first story. The second story is that I am a Tennessee squire, so I own one square inch of land at the Jack Daniels distillery. One square inch? Yeah. That's what that's you size you're bigger, isn't it? Well, yeah, a little bigger, not much. <laughs> but <laughs> Hey ladies. <laughs> You know, he may not be working with a lot, but he sure does have a lot of whiskey. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, so, the story goes, well, no. Where were you going with the story? I, well, the story is. You're just babbling on no, and on. Like I do, a lot of times. But, what happens is. Get back to the fact, review. My previous history is I was a stockbroker. And uh, we used to have an annual event up at, uh. Club Lacan in Knoxville, Tennessee, which is at the top floor of the first Tennessee building <coughs> in downtown Knoxville. Shout out to Club Lacan if you want. Club Lacan, if you want to you sponsor, know let us know. Uh, I was a member there, and so me and my partner, um, we were having an event for our clients, and it was going to be a baby back and Jack night. So we were doing like Jack Daniels barbecue ribs, steaks, blah 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 and tasting their lineup of whiskeys at the same time. At the table I sat at, I have like eight or 10 clients there. And uh, well, one of them is uh, oh, Peyton was, Manning? No, it wasn't Peyton. But anyways, so I've got eight, eight or nine, eight to 10 clients Ladies there. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on. As he I'm to well, I know that, give me a second. Ladies and gentlemen, as he drones on in the story about the Jack Daniels, I'm gonna hit Jack Daniels at a nine because nine? yeah because he's like an old comfortable pair of oh, it is. It's, it's, and as he's droning on with the story i will return in just a moment so what's coming up next is what do we got here we're gonna do we got uh we've got some oh uh, uh, dickel single barrel we haven't well oh, well hold on a second put it back put it back there you know what if it's the right it's like the rest of the dickels 
I'm probably going to be like let down. Uh, but what else we got here? What's that? That's Jack single barrel. Okay, so we're going to do two single barrels, correct? No, that's not a single barrel. This no, no, is, this is, a, we're going to do yeah, Jack Daniels, Jack and we're going to do, we're going to put a dickel against a Jack Daniels, okay. and then we're going to finally close with this one. Okay. All right? Can I finish my story? Well, okay, you drone on, I had to call the guy back at the shop, and... Well, i tell the story. Yeah. Oh, God almighty, good luck, folks. So, I'm having this dinner with clients at uh, Club Lacan, and um, who comes walking in the door and sits at our table... Jimmy Bedford, master distiller number six at uh, Jack Daniels. <laughs> so I get to have dinner with uh, Jimmy Bedford. Great guy, by the way. Um, anybody that ever met him would say the same thing. Just down to earth, personable. Can't say enough about him. So we're having dinner, and uh, I, I I remember the client's name now, Jim Bronze. So. Well, I'm not in the business anymore, so I can say his name. So Jim Bronze was a client of mine, and we're discussing our love and taste for uh, Jack Daniels. And when I was a stockbroker and handled Jim's accounts, um, I would often go to his house to review his portfolio, and um, he would always pour some Jack on the Rocks for us, and we'd have a, a few sips on, and discuss uh, his investments but at this particular night Jim Bedford comes it was not planned I guess he found out about it and we were at an exclusive restaurant in Knoxville and he showed up and uh, sat at our table got to have dinner with him spend an hour hour and a half with him and um, my Tennessee Squire card came from Jimmy Bedford, Master Distillery, number six. And I'm very honored by that. And sorry to say that a few years after I got my Squire ship, Jimmy Bedford passed away while he was on his John Deere tractor in Lynchburg, Tennessee. And um, just a great man, a great ambassador for Jack Daniels. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe he was the first master stealer at Jack Daniels that was not a direct lineage of Jack Daniels. And, um, yeah, but, um, a few times, maybe three or four times that I've been to the Jack Daniels story since then, I've been able to go to the Squire House. Uh, talk with Goose and Randy who um, are legends at Jack Daniels they've been there for 30 plus years so if you ever get the opportunity to go to the distillery especially if you're a squire go to the squire house um, you'll get like a free coffee mug and um, be able to sit down there's some other things that you can get and talk with with more than likely Goose or Randy who have been at Jack Daniels for 30 plus years and they're just great storytellers, great people and uh, I love Jack Daniels. Will always be one of my top distillers. It's like I remember it. Good every time. Well, where should we go from here? We need to probably wrap this up. We've been going for a couple hours. Um, So while George is in this thing, I'll take a little George Dickel uh, hand selected barrel. Mm. 
raisin, caramel bell, bell char, yeah. Um, not my favorite. I definitely get that typical Dickel Flintstone vitamin. Yeah. So. By far. We tried to do a ten, uh, Tennessee tribute tasting uh, some fairly popular and well known and up and coming uh, Tennessee whiskeys. I would say uh, I'm a huge fan of Chattanooga. Huge fan of Bell Mead. Love the Jack Daniels. Um, not number seven. Um, they're single barrel. They're uh, barrel proof. By sure, we didn't have that one out tonight, but it's one of my favorites. Um, the Dickel Bottled and Bond series is really good, especially at the price point, and I, re I recommend that as well. Um, not so much on this one. Um, yeah, like George said, Jack Daniels on number seven is like an old pair of comfortable shoes. Not a fan of the uh, Tennessee Green Bar, so George can take that bottle home so I don't have to drink any more of it. Alright. I think we've done enough here. Um, I've given you a lot of content. For those of you that are not local I want to buy some good Tennessee whiskey I highly recommend the Bell Mead the Chattanooga anything from Chattanooga whiskey buy it the uh, Jack uh, single barrel selection um, and the George Dickel bottled and bond though those are the ones I would choose um, especially for the storyline or whatever um, if you're out of state and they're not readily available and you get a chance um, and you want to tell the story about Nelson's Greenbrier Distillery I would go with the Belt Mead obviously over the original Tennessee Whiskey and I would go with the Chattanooga those are two great stories that I obviously shared earlier I'm gonna take a pass on Sweden's Cove and uh, all right I think that about does it we're way deep I'm stopping recording whoa, whoa, whoa hold on hold on before you get leave I'm not no before you just you just turn it off I just, I gotta make a comment for everybody here. Real quick. All right, make your comment. All right, well, you better the comment. The floor is yours. Well, it is. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. I just talked to the mechanic and everything's going good on uh, his car. I will tell you this, that I think between me and you, all right, yeah, I'll get your hand out of your britches. They're uh, Archie Bunker. Anyways, um, I think we should do Bourbon Quest in your garage because you have nothing but smoking hot neighbors walking their dogs around. <laughs> just saying. Just an observation. Alright. Um, anyways, uh, we're going to stop recording, I guess, right now. Uh, should yeah, we we'll continue on? We're gonna do the, I thought we were going to do the single barrels and we're done. Alright, you go ahead. I've already well, done them, but go ahead. Well, no, you started without me. I was ad living while you were gone. But ad living? You did your thing. Well, anyways, do we have any uh, fresh glasses, I guess? Oh my god, so we're gonna put these over here. We're only like ten whiskeys deep. Well, actually there's nine here. So, if you count them, there's nine. I've got a list going, so... Yeah, I'm gonna go with Jack Daniels at number nine. Old comfortable pair of shoes. Yeah. 
Um, so, where would you put the Jack Daniels old number seven for you? Eh, eh. Like fifth, middle of the road. What's what's your ranking from one to ten? Well, okay. Do you want me to rank them? I'm no, no, no. I'm just saying on the Jack Daniels. Because I'm trying to keep a tally of what no, we're doing. No, I understand. I, I, if what from what we have in front of us right now, I would go one Chattanooga, two Bellmead. No, that's the question I asked you. Jack Seagull. We're, we're running, I thought we were running a tally here of the, the nine that we're reviewing on the list. And then we'll recap where we're at on this. Was that not what I was doing? Mm, no, because I, I, haven't tasted, them. I haven't tasted the Jack Daniels. I haven't tasted the Well, then taste them. Oh my God, you're so impossible to deal with. You know, if I wanted this impossibility, I'd just go home. But, oh! But he won't. Uh, honey, I hope you don't... Not watching this, because I love you. Alright, so we're going to put these over here. Do you have another uh, tasting glass? We need one more for me. No, these are clean. Oh my God. You know, you asked me to come and review. I've got like We've got all these contaminants. No, there's, a, there, there's not 15 glasses. There's, there's eleven. eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve glasses. What do you want? Okay. Anyways, Just mingle them. I don't give a shit. Oh my god! You know. Anyways, this is going to be the. Again, we're gonna go with a comfortable pair of shoes. Single barrel. Single barrel. So we know what this is like. Everybody knows what old number seven is like. And that's just the old number seven in a legacy bottle. You've said that three wrong. times. I haven't. We'll make it a fourth. Well, I'm very happy. Like from 1910. The bottle, not the whiskey. Yeah. Okay. We'll squire. So. Mmm. It's a lot. A little bit on the sweeter side. Yeah. I mean, it, I could tell. The difference between the old number seven, the comfortable pair of your Crocs here, these are like a pair of high end. You know, these are Jordans right here. I mean, you could, you can tell so by just like the, it. you know, you can, you can tell by the smell. I mean, it's it's a lot richer in the bounty and the smell to the nostril. Yeah. It's a lot richer. The the bite isn't there quite as much as the number seven. I agree. Oh, wow. The smoothness is incredible. I mean, old number seven is old number seven. As everybody knows, you know, when you drink this, there's an expectation when you drink it. Wouldn't you agree? You know what? You know. Everybody knows what old number seven right, is. Right, exactly. You know what the point is going to be when you order this, and if you drink it on the rock, straight, mix it, whatever. Yeah. You're going to know, you, you know what your crocs. It's meant to be mixed mainly. Right, but you know, putting on your crocs, exactly what you're going to get. Your crocs are your rocks. Hey, <laughs> they're crocs, folks, if you're watching this. We'll, my, we'll that might be that, you know, we'll take a sponsor. Mm -hmm. Not only will we take a sponsorship, but I think that could be a good plug for your company. I'm, Anyways, I'm, I'm not afraid of rocking a pair of crocs. No, I don't. No. I mean, not on a regular basis, when I'm but if you're paying me to do it. I'll well, when I'm 80 years old, yeah, I'll you're put a set on. You're close. Well, I'm close, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> I'm not drawing my SSI yet. But anyways, going back, this stuff is, I mean, it's delicious. It's it smooth. I mean, it's just, the bite's not there. I mean, I could I could do, definitely do Where this. What do you get on the nose, George? Do you, get any, do you get any like mm. specific notes? Yeah, I do actually. There's sweetness there. It's almost like it's almost kind of like when you smoke meat, almost you know, like a cherry wood or or like a you know. Actually, yeah, you. I would love to have whatever the barrels that they took. I would love to smoke meat in oh, those barrels. You can do that. They're available. Can we buy the barrels? Yeah. Really? So I could buy like a barrel of this stuff that's like out. this taste. Yeah. No, wow. But I would definitely, yeah, this is this is exceptional. I have to say, you know, we're talking crops versus a set of Jordans. I mean, I no doubt. So I, I would, So I'm gonna give this an eight. I d I don't want to influence you. You're not influencing me. I'm because doing I, I mean, I'm doing this shit by my own accord. 
But did you get it? I'm mm. gonna put this thought in your head and see if it draws it out of you. Did you get uh, a banana flavor out of Jack? Hmm, that's an interesting question. Um, no, but there no. Was, well, there was there's a fruit in there. I can tell. Okay. But it's only I, not so much for you know what comes to mind mango almost. Oh, mango. I like mango. Like a mango or a papaya, there's that sweetness yeah. in it. It's not overbearing, it's in there. Well, but the bitterness of your I'm, I'm just trying to educate <laughs> George a little bit, and I don't want to influence him. But just like the traditional note that most people get from George Dickel is Flintstone Vitamin. The traditional note that most people get from Jack Daniels, especially old number seven, but there are the lineup too. A little bit is banana. I don't. For me, it, I, it's not overwhelming banana, but you can tell there's a fruit in there. That's yeah. why I said what I said because you know when and, you, and when you smoke you, meat, and the fruit you said was mango, mango. or a papaya, okay. or something tropical along that line. And it, if if they haven't and tried he's it, Costa Rican, so he knows. Well, tropical. it's just you know I grew up in Miami, so I cook with a lot. And I'm a big cooker. I'm a big smoker. I'm a big griller, yes. and and a big guy. As you can tell, I don't miss very many meals. You know, my doctor, Goldman, Dr. David Goldman. By the way, I you love you, bro. I, no, no, he, well, he's out of his own practice. But Goldman, Dr. Goldman, I love you guys. You guys do an excellent job. But you know what? Um, I would definitely, I, I would, I would definitely want to cook. If I was going to grill, if I was going to smoke a meat. A pork or a brisket or something like that. That we are. We'll I would definitely use that in my in my smoking recipe because that you would choose this over Chattanooga. That's a good. Well, <sighs> you know right? that's that's a good question. All right, so moving on. So moving on, we're gonna move on from there. We're gonna go ahead and do the the Dickles, and if it's anything like the Dickel family that we've had, Flamley, 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 if we're going to do anything from the Dickel family. Have we heard from Shetmeyer? Uh, Shetmeyer, where are you? You know what? I've got people out, you know what? The signs are going up for an Amber Alert. Mm -hmm. Amber you know what? Your cell Shetmire. phone should be going off any minute now for, a, yeah, I don't know. He's, yeah, I'm going to text him while well, you talking. Well, anyways. Um, keep talking. So, I will say this, in the Dickel family, so far, and including Peyton's whiskey, yeah. I have been highly disappointed. I am too. I mean, I really am. And Bye. being being that I'm not a whiskey drinking drinking kind of guy, right. um, you know, these wouldn't be my go-to. And I especially couldn't see paying no. $20, $25 for a shot of this. I mean, if it's yeah. $200 a bottle. Yeah. Depends on what a bar pays for it. I'm sure they get a little bit cheaper. But the point is that you know, Peyton, you know, Peyton, you got look, bro. You you make a lot of money. You're a Hall of Famer. God bless the things you've done for the people we here in Tennessee. You, you know, I, I got to tell you. But you know what, bro? You got to bring people in. You just got to you know, you got to bring you got to bring people in, and you got to. You got to find a recipe, and you got to do this on your own for your price point. You just got to do this on your own, uh, and that's all I'm going to say about it. So, hopefully, I will not be disappointed. That's the barrel select. Okay, so yeah, you know this is bottle number fifty. It's been aged nine years. Now, how long has that been aged from the Jack Daniels? No. Oh. There's not an age saying on it, but it, it's probably like six to seven. Okay. Well, hopefully. Let's see here. All right. So we're going to take a little pull of this. Uh, you're going to take a little drinky pull? We're going to have a little drinky pull. And we're going to drink a little, we're going to drink a little uh, 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 George D uh, Dickel. Hmm. So I will have to say about this. Yeah. That the bitterness that I had in these bottles are not there. Okay, so
there's a distinct difference between the Jack Daniels and this. I can tell you that. Yeah. So here's the taste test. So. Once again, Dickel, I, I don't know what you're using in your batches or what your whatever that tinge is. It's the flush on the bottom. Uh, but you can't reference it because you've never...